Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at a cool technique for faking 3D textures or materials. It's called parallax occlusion mapping and it looks a little bit like displacement but it's all a complete lie and it does not require any kind of geometry. If we look we can see this is just one single flat plane with no subdivisions. But as we pan around it, you can see it kind of looks like the texture's 3D and kind of poking away from us in 3D space. And we can see it's all a lie if we intersect it with another one. You can see it's still just a flat line that's intersecting, as well as as your view angle gets flatter and flatter, you can also see the illusion kind of falls apart a little bit. Now, you may ask why would you want to use this? And the big reason is because it uses much less video memory than displacement mapping and especially more than the dynamic sort of view based subdivisions that Blender has. It also is just really easy to set up and it gives you a kind of a pretty good pseudo 3D effect. So let's go ahead and hop into a fresh Blender file and I can show you how to set it up real quick. One thing you're going to need to do is go to extensions.blender.org and in the search bar search parallax occlusion or parallax node or just parallax and then go to the parallax node entry then click get add-on and you're going to want to drag and drop it straight into blender it'll check for extension updates and then since i already have it installed it's not letting me install it again and then you can just click apply or enable in my case i'll click close now that we're in a fresh blender file that has the add-on installed we can just add a plane or any other shape we want now I'm just going to use materials from Polyhaven, which I will include a link to in the description. You can use pretty much anything off their site, and as you'll definitely see if you play around with it, it works much better for some materials than others. So now we're just going to go to Eevee, let's drag up this bottom bar some, go to the shader editor, click new. Now I have the node wrangler add-on enabled, I can click Control shift t it'll bring up the file browser, then I can just navigate to anywhere I've got a material installed. Let's find maybe one of the blocks of some kind. And we may see that this material may or may not work as well as some other ones. So now you can see we've pulled in the material. We're going to want to disconnect the displacement. These, This and displacement don't really work together. You kind of need to pick one or the other to use. Then we can delete the net mapping nodes. And if we click Shift A, it'll bring up the Add Node menu. If we go down to Parallax Nodes and add Parallax. Then we're going to plug the vector into all of our textures. Click the little down arrow, and then select the displacement of whatever shader we have pulled in. Then in the UV map, we're just going to click UV map. And now, if we pan around it, you might be able to see it's kind of doing some things in some spots. Like right here is the easiest way. And you can see this has much more obvious artifact. Where kind of what it's doing is it's making a bunch of little tiny stacks of our shader. And it's kind of using those to process the depth. And we can kind of use the bias a little bit to tweak the wraparound. So we kind of want this, the side of this, to look like the rock. And if we shift the bias up, we can kind of do that till it starts to happen. And as we get further away, you can see it kind of starts to take it maybe a little bit more. There we go. And now, you may also notice with some materials, if it pushes it too far, you'll get kind of weird sliding, which we can probably find somewhere on this. We pan around it, yeah, right, right here along this hill. As you pan around, you can see it's sort of sliding weirdly. And that's kind of just one of the artifacts of having to slide the bias up. If we put it back to 0.5, you'll probably notice that that part sort of stays in place better, but this looks a little wrong. You'll kind of just have to pick and choose for each material exactly where you want the illusion to fall apart more. For me, I want this to wrap around. You can also change the strength, which will essentially change how far or how strong the effect, effect is. So as we turn it up, it kind of pushes it further down in, in space it also will make the artifacting more extreme. Like you can see in this really low area, it really starts to slide around a lot. You can also turn up the samples to kind of mitigate how many little steps there are. And turning up the samples will also increase the distance. So in this insta instance, we want the strength to be lower. It also seems like turning the samples up may also kind of help some of the sliding artifacts. You just have to kind of turn the samples up and then the strength down until it sort of starts to look good. You can also see that since this material, if we look at just the displacement map, this is really the only spot where it's particularly strong and everywhere else it's very subtle, which means this is kind of not an ideal candidate material for something like this. So let's go ahead and just play around with some other 
shaders as well. I have the Polyhaven add-on, so I can pull the textures straight into here without having to download them from the website. And I'd highly recommend using it. And let's just grab the asbestos sheet, pretty much entirely at random. Again, we'll delete the mapping. We'll add the parallax node. Plug it in. Set UV map to UV map. And then we're going to find the asbestos sheet displacement. And you can see on this shader, it actually works really well because it's just a smooth displacement map that doesn't have really steep changes on it. So it actually looks very convincing. And if we turn on scene lights and maybe add a sun, let's turn the strength up to like 10. Make sure we also disable the displacement because again, that kind of messes it up the shading a little bit. And then we can also turn the normal strength up to sort of add in more of the shadowing. And now you can see it really starts to look very three-dimensional. And on this one, you can see on these ends, it looks really weird clipped off like that. And on the website, the um, Blender Extensions website, there's a little node tree we can use to kind of fake 3D edges. And it only works on flat planes. It doesn't really work on three-dimensional objects. Whereas if we take the shader and just put it on, say, a sphere, and then link the materials, you can see the depth does work, but this next trick we do won't really work. So to do this next thing, what we're going to do is we're going to take the vector, we're going to subtract with a vector math node, we're going to subtract 0.5, then we're going to absolute it, then we're going to do separate xyz, take the x and the y and do a maximum operation, which will basically take whichever of the two values is higher, and then we're going to do a less than and just leave it at 0.5. And if we preview that, essentially what it's doing is taking the very edges where the uh, high points and low points happen, and it kind of cuts them off. So we plug, if we plug this into the alpha map and preview the shader again, you can see it's kind of faking that depth, even though it's still just a flat plane. It looks considerably more three-dimensional. And if we shift our bias down a little bit on this one, you can see we get the whole thing into those. So there's an example of a shader that I would say actually works pretty well with it. We can go ahead and play with another one. Let's try floor pattern. And if you have one like this where they aren't connected, you can just hold shift and right click across all of them and that'll connect them into one little reroute node. Then we can add the parallax, select the texture, select the UV map, and disconnect displacement. And this looks like it's another one where the displacement map is pretty subtle in most places and then it just has a couple little areas that are stronger. And if we preview that, that's fairly true. But let's try turning up the strength and see how it happens. I'm also going to adjust the bias so the rocks kind of wrap around a bit better. And we'll turn up the strength of the normal map some as well. And that works, that actually works pretty well as well. Honestly, most of these are working a lot better than a few of the, the preview materials that I had. But you can see that does a pretty good job of kind of just faking depth. Anyway, uh, that's really all for this short little tutorial. I just wanted to show you this add-on because it's really cool. And you can do this manually, but it's much more difficult. So I hope that is a fun or handy thing for you at times. It's especially good for things that parallax strongly with the camera, but you don't want to spend a whole bunch of VRAM getting full displacement on them. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. I also wanted to shout out real quick that if you are uh, interested, I also make minis over on the website Thangs and sell them. So if you want to help support what I do other than these tutorials, go ahead and follow my link tree and check those out. I'll also link it in the description.